NNPC Ipman cautions buying as full queues return. All extends losses and worry over possible supply increase from OPEC. Namdi Azikiwe International Airport Abuja bags airport in Africa's best performing award as federal government approves the reopening of Osubi Airport worry. Details of these and more on Business Express on the network service of the NTA and we are reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Leah Katin, Baba Tunde. begin the business of the day with some positive news. The Namdi Azikiwe International Airport Abuja has been awarded the Airport Service Quality ASQ Award 2020 as judged by their customers as the best airport in size and region with 5 to 15 million passengers per year in Africa. This award represents the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria Fund's commitment to continuously improving customers' experience across all airports. The recognition came at a time when efforts are geared towards ensuring seamless airport facilitation with the opening of new terminals and upgrading of current infrastructures across board. Despite a turbulent year plagued by COVID-19 induced financial struggles, the authorities say it has endeavored to prioritize customer satisfaction with ensuring that health and safety remains topmost. Fan MD Captain Rabiu Yadudu, who accepted the award on behalf of the authority, restated Fan's commitment to ensuring the safety, security, and comfort of passengers at all airports across the country. Meanwhile, the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, has approved the reopening of Osubi Airport worry for daylight operations in virtual flight rules conditions subject to all procedures and practices, including COVID-19 protocols. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, and the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, IPMAN, have cautioned motorists against panic buying as fuel queues returned in Abuja and Lagos. This is as a result of many filling stations seen not selling petroleum products in Abuja and environs, blaming rising depot price and lack of access to petrol due to new payment rules by the petroleum products marketing company PPMC, a subsidiary of the NNPC, for the development. While some of the marketers in Lagos have shut down their filling stations, many others have also increased the pump price of petrol at their filling stations to avoid shutting down operations. Checks revealed that some of the marketers who were selling at 162 naira per litre have now raised their petrol prices to between 165 naira and 170 naira per litre in defiance of the directive by the NNPC that there would be no increase in petrol price in February. Some of them, while displaying 162 naira per litre 
on their billboards were selling above this price. Aside from the NNPC, retail stations and some major marketers did not open for business in Abuja, leading to queues at the few petrol stations selling to customers, a development which started on Friday evening. To stop panic buying and stocking petrol, the NNPC, however, has assured Nigerians that normal supply of petroleum products will soon be restored since loading has commenced at various depots. Let's now join Benny Adams for an on-the-spot assessment of the situation. So what's the fuel situation this morning in Abuja? Well, thank you so very much, Leah. The fuel situation, from what I can see, is getting better. Right now on Olusegu or Basenjo Way, I am beside the NNPC service center, where you can see from behind me the queue, though a long one, but it's very orderly. Unlike yesterday evening, where this particular spot, the traffic gridlock here could not allow access for vehicular movement because aside this service center at this particular point, we had the Fort Oil by my left across the road. And also you, 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 can, you can see um, black market uh, sellers, people selling in gallons, making bricks business at this particular time. It's actually better this morning, unlike what we witnessed yesterday evening. Okay, so um, from, Benny, from the look um, of things, though the Fort Oil is not dispensing at this particular point in time, but the NNPC service center is holding forth, attending to customers in an orderly way. All right, uh, Benny, can you uh, quickly uh, tell us, we, we just saw some people carrying gallons around uh, there. Like, how much are they selling, are they selling those, uh, those, those gallons? How much? Well, for a four liter, a four liter is going for 1,000, 1,500, 1,800, depending on who is selling. It's about your power of bagging. Okay, so Benny, before I let you go, do you, did, did you get any feelers if this would abate before the end of today? Well, from information we get in from marketers as well as authorities from NNPC, we, we, we hear that trucks are getting loaded from depots and filling stations that didn't have this supply before now are beginning to have the supply. So uh, the, the, the commitment is that uh, before, in the next two days, we are going to see a better supply of uh, the commodity in filling stations. But as it is, those who are already dispensing are getting to exhaust their supply, like the fourth oil by Olusogu Obasanjo, where they sold all through uh, to the middle of the night yesterday. But as of this morning, at this particular time, they are no longer dispensing. And reason is that they have exhausted their supply. When I asked when they are going to have the next supply, they said, well, a truck is on the way. They are expecting supply at this particular moment. Okay, thank you, Benny, for bringing that update uh, to us. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you very much, Leah. All right, great. So to take a deeper look at the fuel situation in some parts of the country and what is being done to cushion the effect of the nation's, oper is the, uh, nation's operations uh, controller of the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, Ipman, Mike Osatui, he joins us from Lagos. You're welcome, Mr. Mike, to Business Express. Yeah, good morning. Great. So the long queues are back again. What are the reasons? Yeah, the queues are bad because um, my members don't have access to enough products. And particularly, this new payment system of PPMC that is called Express Online Portal. 10% uh, of my members nationwide have, have been registered. And once you're not registered, you can't, have, you can't make payments. 
So that's a big factor. And as I speak with you right now, it's only, it's only for that we all depots that have products that belong to PPMC. So, and, but commonly, they used to store in Nipco, in ITO, and, and other private depots. But I mean, but right now, as I speak, which is confirmed, it's only private that have products. And even with that, 10% 10, 10 of my members have code. That's number one. Number two, uh, we used to buy from that, I mean, depot owners. And we don't have any problem before. But I mean, but right now, they sell to us at 161, 160. And they don't even sell it again. It gains 147, 140. So if you if you buy at 161, you have no choice. But then you have your transport and uh, your margin. I mean, the minimum is 170, I mean, 170. It's even cheap, right? But it's, it's, it's better for government to open up and pump fuel to, to the system because they are the sole importer. They are, they, are, they are processing, I mean, a, a kind of a, a, a monopoly market. So if they have allowed us to import fuel and make other people uh, stick with that now to import, then they could agree level playing grants. But when they, they have agreed to do it alone, then they should do it well and make fuel uh, open to my members. If, if they give us the fuel, they're going to dispense with the Nigerians at official price. So with the explanation you've given to us now, let's, let's try to understand. Is it just about the fact that you don't have access to the, to, to the, to the, to the products or it's born out of the fact that the payment system is affecting you and, of course, members of your association? Uh, before now, we we are the middle uh, customers to depot owners, and we we pay in within a day you take your products, and also depots. But depots owner now don't sell to us again, and when they sell to us, they sell at 160, 161 naira per liter, against one for teeth, which is which is supposed to be the depot price. So, and as I speak with you now, some of them don't even sell to us again. And we have no choice than to revert to PPMC uh, depots. And in PPMC depot now, with the new payment system we took off uh, about two years ago, we have not been registered. There's cluster. So 10% of my members have code now. So I mean 10% cannot even access to the code, I mean, to payment system. And even when you have code, you already be, been given one truck or two trucks, when you can even dispense one truck in two days. So we have problem of supply. We have to tell the truth so that we can know where to solve the problem. So the part not don't sell. And when they sell, they sell at 161. You can go across check. And my member have no choice than to add their transport and add their margin. So are we facing uh, what I, I would uh, describe as an increase in prices in the short term? That's the meaning. I mean, that's the meaning. But officially, the government said they're not going to increase price. They have not increased their price at any depots. Right? But what's what we seen? Why depot owners increase their price? So there's a there's there's still there's a gap there which we need to unravel so that we can get to where we are we are going. So that I mean Nigeria can have access to petrol as they used to have for years. Because in the last two, three, four years, we don't have this kind of experience. It means there's a, there's a dislocation, that there's, there's a problem somewhere. We, 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 I mean, we need to, uh, to, to, to see and solve the problem. Okay, now in March last year, the federal government announced subsidy removal and full deregulation of the downstream to allow market forces determine the price. Is this what we're seeing play out now? And how is it going with, with you people in that uh, IPMA? Yes, the government, they announced that they have, they have uh, removed subsidy in March last year. And, um, but it was, it was possible because that time the good price was new. It was a tight, that is something for something. But now, good now is 65. In February, it's, it was uh, 56, 57. But I, but I can tell you today that the minimum price you can sell at the pump based on the crude price, if there's no subsidy, it's around 15 dollars per liter, 215, 216. 
And if we are selling, we are, we are selling at 160, there's a gap about, about something out there. So, and who is paying that, that, that gap when, when PPMC is not NGO? So it means there's still subsidy being absorbed somewhere by somebody. And who is, who is somebody? Is is government. Because it means they're taking some, uh, money from somewhere to cushion the, the gap. And even if you are talking of spot price today, spot price is if you are buying the crew today, you are bringing the uh, the fuel today, the pump price will be 230 naira. That is true. I stand to be corrected by anybody. So if 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 crude now go to eighty dollars per barrel, where are we? But the only, I mean, but the way out is for government to be serious about gas. There are two ways to do it. The 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 profit they are making from crude crude oil, uh, oil now, they can use it for free conversion of vehicles for Nigerians, so that Nigerians can move from petrol to to gas, which is cheaper and half of the price of petrol. That's number one. Number two, they can also give Nigerians free gas cylinder for their domestic use. So that also we make a, a, a shift, a big shift from the expensive petrol to cheaper gas. Okay, so, can I just like take this in, with you, Mr. Mike? Like, like can what I they just did take in, this uh, with in, you? Uh, metering, metering, which is now free. People now we have to, to, to meet up. I mean, in fact, this, this key was done in, in many other countries. You know, they can even put small margin that people are even paying for the conversion over years and and, and saying that without even knowing. Okay, Mr. Mike, can I just take this question before before we just go ahead because time is not on our side. You're talking about moving to gas. Is it man and the oil industry in Nigeria? Are we ready for this transition from petrol to gas? Yeah, we are we are quite ready because in the last one year, the government has launched the uh, the deepening of gas usage scheme, right? And they have also seen that Ipman stations nationwide and even Maman station too are available to install all these gas kits and even to to I mean to install the gas conversion machines. So we have the structure. It's just the will of the government now to come out to come and install this. Uh, machines and we are good to go. We okay, are going now to be in one minute, stations. will you also tell us what will be the steps that that can be taken to ameliorate the effect of this uh, transport problem we're having, coming from the fact that Nigeria is just coming out of a recession and, of course, life is not so comfortable for a lot of people. Yeah, the government can bring up some palliative for some months for the masses. But I can assure you, if government can speed uh, uh, speed up the metering system in the gas sector, they can also speed up the conversion scheme in the in the gas sector. Within six months, if they are ready, we can we are because we are we have the structure on ground stations, all the villages, some towns. So it's just to I mean to put out put that money from the uh, gain they are getting from the crude. And so that we can bring this equipment in, install it, and within some time, within short time, I mean, vehicles will be running on gas, which is half of the price. Okay, Even thank you very house. much. I've been speaking with uh, Mike. He is of Ipman. He is the operations controller. Mike, Otu um, I hope, Mike Osatui. Thank you. Thank you. All right, great. So oil prices fell more than 1% on Tuesday, extending losses that began last week as investors unwound long positions on concerns that OPEC may agree to increase global supply in a meeting this week and Chinese demand may be slipping. Brent crude dropped 78 cents to $62.91 a barrel after losing 1.1% the previous day. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude slid 74 cents to $59.90 a barrel, having lost 1.4% on Monday. And gold prices edged higher on Tuesday as a retreat in U.S. Treasury yields and optimism over the $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief bill lifted the allure of the non-yielding metal.
Micro, small and medium enterprises in Nigeria have been sharing survival stories in the wake of the COVID-19 global pandemic. Millennium Cleaners, a dry cleaning company, is one of those MSMEs that benefited from federal government approved funds by the CBN, I beg your pardon, and the Federal Ministry of Trade and Investment. Nekaoko was at the premises of that company and presents this edition of Surviving COVID-19. Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. Apart from the health disaster, the most immediate challenge resulting from the pandemic is the economic paralysis as no sector was spared. John Kiespan is the manager of Millennium Cleaners. He said the venture fell in revenue by as much as 70% at the beginning of the pandemic. So we had to close the business for a period of one month. And after the period of one month, we actually came in again to start the business, but we experienced a drastic low patronage because, you know, some of the customers are afraid of, you know, of giving out their, their items out because of the fear of COVID-19. Therefore, our sales sincerely dropped drastically. As a survival strategy, the company downsized its workforce from 13 to 7, but the problem was far from over. One of the challenges that this uh, COVID-19 post was issue of paying staff salary. Uh, we benefited from the survival fund from the government, which we really commend their effort in that. So when this relief came, we were able to settle some salaries that were, we were owing staffs. Kiespan is hopeful for the future and says the company will continue to fight for survival. But how much longer other dry cleaners can survive the pandemic is the question begging for answers. One of the things that is key is that uh, every businessman needs to always have a plan plan in the sense that we are not sure of what will happen the next day. So that brings in that one need to invest properly, one also need to uh, ensure that you don't just depend on one business because there are other businesses that can strive. So we need to plan ahead and then, and then save for a rainy season like this. Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. Stocks in Nigeria resumed this month on a positive note amid optimism on the arrival of COVID-19 vaccines this Tuesday morning. The all share index gained on Monday by 0.33% after a week of bearish trade. Away from home, Asia-Pacific stocks rise following overnight gains on Wall Street. Stocks in Asia traded mixed on Tuesday following strong gains overnight for shares on Wall Street. Shares in mainland China were lower with the Shanghai Composites down 1.21%. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index dipped 1%. In Japan, the Nikkei 5 fell 0.86%. In Europe, London's FTSE is seen opening 21 points lower at 6,558. Germany's DAX down 55 points at 13,943, while CAC 40 of France dropped 16 points. Contracts tied to the major U.S. stock indices traded lower in extended trading Monday evening after the S&P 500 rallied more than 2% during regular trading hours for its best day since June. Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 123 points, S&P 500 and Nasdaq 100 also both traded in negative territory. Neka Oko, Business Express. Now, thank you, Neka, for that. And of course, this is where we end this episode of the program. Don't forget, you can access these in all previous episodes on YouTube. And you can also communicate with us on Twitter. And the handle is NTA News Now. The hashtag is BizX. With value of feedback, do join us again Wednesday at 3 p.m. for another package. I am Leah Katun Baba Tundi saying, while staying safe, keep thinking and doing business.